Tonight on Elon Local News, a violent act causes campus to be on high alert. What campus police plans to do to keep students safe? It's hard enough to solve uh, a robbery. It, it's that much harder when you wait 13 hours to report it. It's an event that is helping the local economy and bringing the community together. It's awesome for people to come and see all the economic growth that downtown's experiencing right now. And later in the show, we found a place where students can have a wrong answer and still be right. So this is a space where it's okay to fail. In fact, it's expected. Elon Local News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Rajad Agarwal. And I'm Jackie Pascal. We begin tonight with reminders to stay safe after a student reported being held at knife point this weekend on campus. Our Gary Grumbach has more. Gary? Jackie, almost 13 hours. That's how long it took for an Elon student to notify Elon Town Police after he was robbed at knife point Friday night. Junior Jack Hollowell was punched in the ribs and held at knife point by three assailants while he was walking home from a party near Trollinger Apartments on Friday. Elon police are investigating. Initially uh, asked for his wallet. Uh, he did not give it to him. Elon police say when Hollowell refused, one of the suspects punched him and said, I'm going to stab you if you don't give me your wallet. There was a brief struggle. Uh, and after the guy presented the knife, he, he gave up his wallet. 13 hours after the incident allegedly occurred, Hollowell reported it to police. Assistant Chief James Perry says Hollowell's wallet contained $300 in cash, a credit card, and his Phoenix card. Here's who authorities are looking for. Three African-American males, one with a tattoo sleeve, who were driving a tan or gold Toyota Corolla. It's hard enough to solve uh, a robbery. It, it's that much harder when you wait 13 hours to report it. Perry says public complacency when it comes to reporting crimes is a problem. Elon is a fairly safe community, but we do have instances where things like this occur. I think because it's so safe, people lose track of uh, the fact that this can happen. I will be sitting down with Jack Hollowell tonight. Check out tomorrow's online exclusive for more coverage of this scary situation. Now, crime in the area has continued since Friday night. Just yesterday, there was a string of larcenies in the Elon and Gibsonville area. This afternoon, police arrested Anthony Crawford of Graham and charged him with five counts of felony larceny and four counts of felony breaking and entering. Now, Jackie and Rajat, a simple tip from Elon police. Walk in groups and be aware of your surroundings. Thanks, Gary. A new tree stands outside Danley Kay as a tribute to an old friend. Friends and family of Elon student Trent Stetler remembered his life Saturday with a tree planting ceremony and memorial. <laughs> Students told stories about Stetler and the impact he had on others' lives. Stetler died last January and is believed to have taken his own life. That now he is remembered right. by the tree That's outside true. his freshman dorm and in his friends' memories. When I went. Keeping his memory alive and uh, not replacing him, but acting as sons to, to his parents and as brothers to his sister. I think that would be the best and that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Leave letters, pictures, or stones by the tree to honor Stetler's memory. With the presidential election just 14 months away, the candidates are preparing their campaigns. The Democratic Party has five potential candidates, former Governor of Rhode Island Lincoln Chafee, former Secretary of State and First Lady Hillary Clinton, former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley, Senator from Vermont Bernie Sanders, and former Senator Jim Webb from Virginia. And the Republican list seems to keep growing. There are currently 17 Republican candidates running, according to the New York Times. Some of the candidates include Scott Walker, Dr. Ben Carson, and Donald Trump. Now, with all those candidates, you might be a little confused on what you need to know about them. Our Brianna McClelland is here in studio to break down the top two candidates in each party. Brianna? Thanks, Rajat. No need to fear about the commotion surrounding the upcoming 2016 presidential election. Here's a breakdown of what you need to know. Leading the Democratic poll is former Secretary of State and First Lady Hillary Clinton. According to Clinton, her campaign includes goals like building the economy of tomorrow, fixing our dysfunctional political system, and protecting the United States from threats that we see and ones that are on the horizon, as reported by Newsweek. Second for the Democratic nomination is Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont, who identifies himself as an independent. According to Sanders' campaign website, his main areas of focus are income and wealth inequality, racial justice, and fighting for women's rights, as well as others. On the right side of the aisle, business mogul Donald Trump is dominating the Republican polls. Although he doesn't speak much about his political views, he has made a point to share his view on immigration reform. 
on his website, he says, quote, a nation without borders is not a nation. There must be a wall across the southern border. Last but not least, you may recognize his last name considering both his dad and his brother, George H.W. and George W. Bush, have served as presidents. Former governor of Florida, Jeb Bush, puts an emphasis on jobs and businesses, taxes, and education. Now, although he's hoping to follow in their footsteps, he makes it known he has learned from both their successes and failures to help make his own path. Stay tuned with Elon Local News as we continue coverage of these presidential hopefuls as we get closer to 2016. Verjat, back to you. Thanks so much, Brianna. In studio now, we have Bobby DeStefano, a senior finance major, here to speak with us about what students should know about the stock market. Thank you so much, Bobby, for being with here, right, here with us tonight. Thanks for having me. Now, first off, Bobby, what should students be concerned about, or should they be concerned about what happened last week in the stock market? I don't necessarily think that what happened last week should be of concern to students. I think that there's key news points that people should be watching, such as oil prices, what's happening in China, currencies, and, um, and what the Federal Reserve is going to be doing with uh, interest rates. But the news that came out last week concerning the U.S. economy was actually positive, speaking towards employment and things like that. But because of volatility in China, uh, our market kind of felt some shocks from that, and therefore equities went down. So do you believe the media might have exaggerated some of the stock market things going on? I know it kind of changes each week, so do you think it was too much? or I don't necessarily think that it was an exaggeration so much as they painted it in a, in a negative, more negative light than they may need to have concerning the U.S. economy because there was a lot of money lost in that week and then a lot of money gained back. But the focus was more on, on that than, for instance, the health of the U.S. economy with good statistics good statistics coming out, it means that the Fed might actually raise interest rates, which is scary for a lot of investors, but really means that we're moving towards a healthy economy and that things are going well. Employment's going up and we're having the type of growth that we want to have. Well, and mm -hmm. what exactly should students be paying attention to? If you had to t give a student advice, what one thing should they pay attention to uh, relating to the stock market? I think that right now, uh, the Federal Reserve is probably the biggest focus within the economy right now because if they raise interest rates, the first time it's happened in over a decade, and it, it would be a very different environment than what anybody our age really has, has seen. So that, and then also oil prices. Uh, just today, OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, announced that they might uh, cut their production, and so oil prices might actually spike back up. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bobby, for joining us and giving us all of those really helpful tips. I know we're going to really look out for those. Uh, so when we come back, our Alex A will break down the current, the current headlines in the stock market and what we should be looking for. And we'll show you a place on campus where students are using new technology to print their dreams. <laughs> 